Thank you very much, uh, Alia, and welcome to everybody this afternoon uh, to this, uh, uh, I think, very interesting presentation. The Ebola virus disease erupted into American consciousness with a big outbreak in West Africa, particularly in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia between 2013 and 2016, where deaths totaled about 11,000 out of some 29,000 infections and what amounted to a trickle in the rest of the world. While these figures are dwarfed by COVID-19 tolls today, at the time, they brought about well-founded fears of an imminent worldwide pandemic. But the Ebola virus disease did not begin in 2013, nor was this the first outbreak. While it is probably impossible to pinpoint its actual beginning, there can be no dispute that the man we are privileged to welcome to Africa at noon today was the first scientist to encounter the disease. And then he went on to become part of a team of researchers who identified it in 1976, the year of the first known outbreak in Yambuku in Northwestern Democratic Republic of Congo, near the Ebola River from which the disease got its name. Jean-Jacques Muyembe Tamfum is currently the Director General of INRB, the Congolese National Institute of Biomedical Research, and President of the Congolese Academy of Science. He earned his medical degree from Louvanium University, today's University of Kinshasa, in 1969, and a PhD in virology from the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium in 1973. He has published over 150 scientific articles. Upon his return to Congo, known as Zaire at the time, he became a faculty member serving as Dean of the School of Medicine for some time. He worked on various infectious diseases such as cholera until he encountered what was to become known as Ebola virus disease. He collected the first samples of blood and liver, barehanded, I understand, for lack of medical gloves, from the deceased, and took them to laboratories in Belgium, England, and the US. But his name subsequently became a mere footnote in articles and books that ensued. He has been working on finding a cure for this disease for over 40 years, and his efforts have come to fruition, as he will describe himself shortly. When I looked up the first word of the title of today's talk, Ebanga, I fully expected to find that it is the name of a locality or a person in Congo. But if you look it up, Google will take you directly to the monoclonal antibody that Dr. Muyembe developed to treat Ebola with the scientific designation of MAB114, MAB114. This drug received FDA approval in December 2020, and it is now manufactured in this country by Ridgeback Biotherapeutics. For Dr. Jean-Jacques Muyembe, the year 2015 seems to have been a banner year, as he received several international awards in recognition of his efforts. I will cite several, a Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellence in Phylovirus Research from Washington, DC, 2015, the Christophe Merieux Prize for his pioneering work on Ebola hemorrhagic fever in Africa, Paris, 2015, the Royal Society Africa Prize for his seminal work on vi viral hemorrhagic fevers, including Ebola in London, 2015. And in 2019, he received the third Hideo Noguchi Africa Award from Japan for medical research category for research to combat the deadly Ebola virus and efforts to train legions of disease fighters 
in the field of medical research, contributing to the health and welfare of uh, African people. Uh, I was in Tokyo 2019. And uh, someone called him the Ebola hunter. In addition, he was named one of Time Magazine 100 most influential people in 2020, as well as one of the journal Nature's 10 personalities of significance in science in 2018 and 2019. He was also named an honorary international fellow of the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene in recognition of outstanding contributions to the field of tropical medicine in Baltimore, 2017. Professor Muyembe has pre-recorded his lecture. Though he would have preferred to do so in French, he offered to uh, do it in English. We would like to make this session as bilingual as possible. Jacqueline Ebelabena, a PhD candidate in the Department of French and Italian will help, help with uh, translating and interpreting. We ask that you write your questions in Q&A and Jackie and I will take turns translating them if necessary. Professor Muyembe may choose to answer in English, but he might choose to answer in French and will translate. So uh, please help me uh, to welcome Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe Tamfun. Merci, merci beaucoup. D'abord, bonjour à tous. Ici chez nous, on dit bonsoir. Yes, uh, uh, hello everybody. Um, here we're saying uh, good morning, but uh, right now over here we, we're in the evening, so good evening. Uh, <coughs> Merci beaucoup, uh, Professeur uh, Aliko, uh, pour cette présentation qui me fait vraiment un grand honneur. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Songolo, for Professor Aliko, he said, uh, for uh, this uh, presentation, this introduction that uh, honors me. Et je dois aussi remercier uh, toute l'équipe qui a préparé uh, cette session. Je sais que ce n'est pas facile d'avoir aux États-Unis une traduction du français en anglais. Yes, and I would like also to, to thank the whole team that uh, worked hard on this, uh, on this session. I know it's not uh, uh, easy in the US to have uh, you know, a, a session that's translated uh, from French into English. Merci beaucoup pour votre temps, mes chères dames, car je vois là, la plupart d'entre vous sont des dames. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all the women. I see that uh, all the uh, all the people working on this are women. Je pense que ceci c'est une opportunité pour nous de vous présenter les travaux scientifiques que nous réalisons ici en Afrique. I think this is an opportunity for us. To, uh, uh, to present to you the scientific work that uh, we do here in Africa. Uh, mes collaborateurs, tous ceux qui ont participé à cette étude sur Ebanga, sont vraiment honorés uh, ce soir. My team uh, that uh, worked on, on Ebanga feels very honored this evening. Encore une fois, merci à vous tous. Once more, thank you to all of you. I would like to thank the organizer of this afternoon conference for its kind invitation. It is a great honor for me to address all of you this afternoon. The title of my lecture is Development of Ebanga as a Treatment for Ebola Virus Disease in DRC. Next slide, please. Here is uh, the plan of my presentation. I will, I will give the background of Ebola virus disease, stages of MAF, 
114 development, MAP114 and Ebola virus disease epidemics in DRC. And finally, I will give a brief conclusion. Next slide, please. Uh, the filovirus family includes uh, four genera, it is virus, virus, Ebola virus, and marble virus. We, we are interested by uh, Ebola virus with Mundibudio Ebola virus as a species, Sudan Ebola virus, and Zaire Ebola virus. They are the most uh, important Ebola virus in Africa. And marble virus has only one species, marble, marble virus. And uh, next slide, please. And uh, I will give you the ecology and transmission of uh, Ebola virus. Bats are often pointed out as a reservoir of the Ebola virus, but we have never detected Ebola virus RNA on more than 10,000 samples analyzed at the NRB. However, the hypothesis of the bat as a reservoir or vector of the virus still persists. In this case, Non-human primates and other animals get infected by eating food contaminated by bats. This is the episodic cycle. Humans become infected either by handling the meat of infectious bats or by contact with the meat of non-human primates found dead in the forest. Six or contaminated humans infect the family members and care of and caregivers. The infection is transmitted by contact with body fluids. There is an initial amplification of uh, the infection by hospital with low standard of hygiene and sanitation. About 10% of healthcare workers are infected. A second amplification takes place during funeral ceremonies by contact with corpses. At last, the virus can persist in the body fluid of survivors and constitute a risk of sexual transmission. Okay, the next slide, please. The following map show the location of Ebola outbreak in the DRC. We are currently in our 12th, 12th outbreak. The DRC is the most infected country in Africa. The, most, the, the first epidemic took place in 1976 in Yambuku in the north the second in 1995 in Kikwit in the south. The largest outbreak of Ebola virus disease occurs in the provinces of North and South Kivu and Ituri in the east. There were 3,091 cases and 2,074 deaths a case fatality rate of 76%. During these 40 years, there were no vaccine, no treatment for Ebola virus disease. Slide six, please. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to present to you the stages in the development of our anti-Ebola molecules, the monoclonal antibodies uh, 114. Slides, please. The starting point is a clinical observation made during 
1995 Ebola virus epidemic in Kikwit. The Kikwit epidemic occurred 19 years after Yambuku. It was the first urban epidemic with the risk of spreading to the two closest capitals in the world, Kinshasa and Brazzaville. We established the first structure and strategies to fight against Ebola virus disease. And we try to treat eight Ebola patients with the blood of convalescence. Next slide, please. Of the eight patients treated in this way, seven survive the infection. But this important observation remains for a long time as an anecdote. The argument against these uh, results were that the, the virus had lost its virulence at the tail of the epidemic or small sample size uh, without a control uh, group. And also Dr. Peter Jarling of NIH showed that Ebola antibodies would not be neutralizing. And finally, uh, the treatment of Ebola patients with convalescent plasma in West Africa was inconclusive. Next slide, please. I'll show you the Congolese team that carried out the blue transfusion of convalescent in Kikwit in 1995. Next slide, please. Here I'm showing you the woman who was recovered from Ebola after, after blood transfusion from convalescent in Kikwit outbreak. Next slide, please. Despite this, we continue to explore the observation of the Kikwit epidemic. In 2004, Dr. Graham Barney from VRC NIH visited my institute in Kinshasa, the INRB. We discussed on the interest in the Kikwit findings and we plan to send survivors from Ebola to the VRC to explore their humoral immunity. In 2005, I visited VRC and met with, uh, with uh, Director Gary Nebel and Dr. Nancy Sullivan, who, who was the Chief of Biodefense. NIH and INRB signed a research agreement with the departure of Dr. Mulangu and Dr. Chani in 2006 at Nancy Laboratory at NIH. And later on, the survivor Mobiala Cyprien, one of the convalescent blood donors in Kikwit, went to VRC. And Mobiala gave his blood that will contribute to the discovery of uh, MAP 114. Next, please. Uh, Mobiala was uh, uh, a patient who developed severe Ebola virus disease and illness. He developed fever, headache, arthralgia, bloody diarrhea, and mucosal and conjunctival hemorrhage. He was hospitalized for two weeks, followed by six months of providing inpatient care to patients admitted with the Ebola virus infection. Next slide, please. From the blood of uh, of Mubiala, lymphocyte B were isolated. A panel of memory B cells was uh, generated, and uh, the gene was isolated, and uh, monoclonal antibodies were 
uh, develop to uh, to treat Ebola uh, Ebola patients. Next slide, please. Well, in these slides, I want to show you the rationale for development of MAP 114. MAP 114 was identified from a subject in, infected with Ebola virus during the Ebola outbreak in Kikwit, uh, DRC, and who maintained circulating antibodies for, for more than uh, 10 years after infection. MAP114 was selected following isolation and screening of a panel of memory B cells based on its binding to the Ebola GP and in vitro neutralization potential. Regis macaque passively immunized with MAP-114 up to five days post-challenge with a lethal dose of Ebola virus were protected from Ebola virus disease, underscoring its therapeutic potential in human with Ebola virus disease. Based on its in vitro activity, and previous experience with other MAP, like ZMAP and so on, against Ebola virus disease. The rationale for development of MAP is to provide a simplified therapeutics product and or dosing regimen for Ebola virus disease to identify the mechanism of Ebola virus disease protection and explore development for potential stop, uh, stockpiling. Uh, next, please. Um, the findings of uh, these uh, first studies uh, were published in, uh, in the journal uh, Science. Next, please. Yes, the question at that time was, uh, can treatment be optimized for outbreak flus? So, um, for a single, a single dose of MAP-114, a simplified treatment regimen, it means uh, for uh, less than one day, and shorter infusion time, um, it is less than one hour. So for that, we use the syringe pump, uh, as you can see on this uh, slide. Slide, please. Uh, a short infusion of MAP114 given five days post-infection protected experimental animal. And also viremia was lower and lasted between seven and ten days compared to the control animal with very high level of viremia and a very high duration of, uh, of viremia. A slide, please. The phase one clinical trial was conducted in the USA with different doses to evaluate the safety and tolerability of the MAP-114. The MAP-114 MAP was reconstituted in 1,000 ml and uh, infused during 30 minutes. After the favorable study in non-human primate, we move on to human following to protocol. Next slide, please. The expanded access protocol and clinical trial. Next slide, please. The WHO recommendation for EAP are as follow. No proven effective treatment exists. It is not possible to initiate clinical study immediately and preliminary efficacy and safety from lab animal studies support is its use. Adequate resources are available to ensure that risk can be minimized. Informed consent is obtained 
the administration of experimental product is monitored and the results are documented and shared in a timely manner. The panel of experts recommended the first treatment will be with ZIMAP, RADEMCV, REGENERAL, and MAP114. Next slide, please. For this uh, uh, investigation, we use four molecules, uh, ZIMAP, REGENERAL, MAP114, and RADEMCV. ZIMAP is a cocktail of chimeric human murine monoclonal antibodies. Regeneron is a cocktail of fully human monoclonal antibodies. MAP114 is a single human monoclonal antibodies. And Remdesivir is a nucleotide pro product. All these uh, products are specific for uh, Ebola, Ebola Zaire, or species. Uh, Redemptivir has a broad spectrum antiviral uh, pro product, product. And the treatment for uh, Zimap is three doses for three days. Uh, Regeneron is given by a single dose and also uh, MAP114 for single dose and uh, radium severe uh, for uh, 10 to 14 days. Next, please. The expanded access was conducted according to the following algorithm. Does the patient have confirmed Ebola virus disease? If no, we stop. If yes, we consult with clinical expert group. Is sufficient staff, is there a sufficient staff and monitoring equipment available for prolonged in, uh, infusion? If no, you will have limited capacity. We will prioritize a list of therapeutics we will start with Redemsevir and then MAP114 or Regeneron. If it is yes, we have adequate capacity. We will use the list as follow. We'll start with ZIMAP, Redemsevir, Regeneron, and finally MAP114. Final decision rests with the treating physician and or the team at the time of proposed treatment. Next slide, please. So the Ebola outbreak in North Kivu and Ituri was an opportunity for us to use these antiviral molecules. The Ebola outbreak started on August 1st, 2018 in North Kivu, and samples from Mangina were confirmed as cases of Zaire Ebola virus at the NRB. And on, on, on August 6th, NRB sequencing confirmed that the outbreak was caused by Zaire Ebola virus, supporting usage of VSV vaccine and ZMAP and MAP114. So um, on this slide, I show you the sequencing of uh, the virus and it showed that the outbreak was caused by Ebola virus, Zaire. Next, please. So, uh, on August 7th, 
we obtain the RB approval given by the Kinshasa School of Public Health for use for uh, uh, vaccine, Ebola vaccine, that is the RVSV above, and for MAP114. Next, please. On August 8, WHO and the Minister of Health start RVSV ring vaccination in Mangina. And on August 10, INRB treats, treats two Ebola patients under EAP in Mangina Hospital. From 11 to 13, eight more patients were treated in Mangina Hospital. Next, please. In this slide, I want to show you two recovered cases of Ebola, two girls after receiving MAP114 in Mangina and their EAP. Next, please. What lesson learned from EAP? Several antiviral and immune-based therapeutics intervention could be administered to patients with Ebola virus disease, vary in the extent of their preclinical safety and efficacy data in human, differ in logistical challenges to administration. The EAP umbrella provided an approach to use of this agent during an outbreak and was an important advance in providing equal access to care. Given the many unknown about this intervention, RCT randomized clinical trial are essential to determine the relative efficacy and safety individually and in combination. The potential benefits of this intervention remain severely limited without a foundation of optimized supportive care. Next slide, please. It is why we initiated a randomized clinical trial with MAP114. Next slide, please. RCT of investigational project on Ebola virus disease, limited trial evidence that ZMAP was effective in the 2014-2018 outbreak in West Africa. So it is included in a standard of care for this trial. EAP does not allow for collection of data in a unbiased way. It is why randomization helps prevent certain bias. Next slide, please. In this slide, I want to give you the location of Palm RCT study in DRC. It was in, uh, in Beni, Mangina, and Katwa. Next slide, please. So investigational therapeutics for the treatment of people with Ebola virus disease uh, was conducted as follows. The objective was to study the safety and effectiveness of four drugs for people with Ebola virus. Eligibility, only people of any age with Ebola infection who are in the treatment centers were selected. A study process, participants were randomized to one of four study drugs. ZMAP, about four hours, Redemsevir, about one hour. MAP114, 
30 to 6 minutes one time. Regeneron, about two hours one time. And the study was sponsored by NIAID, NIAID DRC. And um, the study was uh, executed by uh, Dr. Mulangu Sabwe. Next slide, please. Treatment. Treatment with uh, MAP114 increased survival of Ebola patients. First, randomized controlled Ebola in trial in DRC. More than six, 600 patients were treated. The cumulative incidence of death after 28 days with MAP114 was lower than with ZMAP and Redemsevere. Our study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This was the basis for FDA approval. Next slide, please. The US Food and Drug Administration approved MAP114 that we call a banga for the treatment of for the treatment for Zaire Ebola virus infection in adults and children. A banga blocks binding of the virus to the cell receptor, pre preventing its entry into the cells. Next slide, please. In conclusion, once deadly and sporadic, Ebola virus disease epidemics are increasingly frequent in the Congo and Nile Basin. Today, Ebola virus disease is preventable and curable thanks to Merck RVSVs above ZP vaccine and to monoclonal antibodies, including Ebanga MAP114. Ebanga, the dream of my life, is now a reality thanks to the commitment of Congolese scientists, the cooperation with the NIS USC, and the contribution of Congolese patients and survivors. Next, please. The main step for the development of a banga can be summarized in five points. Clinical observation of seven patient cure of Ebola after receiving blood from convalescent in 1995 in Ikwit. Our pers perseverance and tenacity to deepen this observation considered by some as an anecdotal. Initiation of an excellent collaboration with NIH. The choose of the donor Mombiala, who, after having contracted the disease, continued to expose himself to the Ebola virus by treating other patients. And finally, the commitment of Congolese researchers in basic laboratory research, in clinical trial in the field, and in the submission of the file to the FDA. And next, please. And finally, um, what remains to be done is to decipher the scientific enigma on the reservoir or vector of the Ebola virus for the prediction of epidemics. Identifying the reservoir of the Ebola virus is the greatest scientific challenge of our time. Next slide, please. I want to thank you, to thank you, all of you, 
Thank you very much.